Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming out to the show today uh, to Sales Mastery with Steve Batiz. So, Steve, thanks for coming in, buddy. Thanks, man. Uh, Steve is uh, one of my favorite agents, and here's why. So what do we always talk about? Um, the way we operate here in this company generally is almost 100% social farming. So when we get somebody cool doing business the way he does, it's just another avenue for us to um, kind of think outside the box on it. And, and if I can just give you a little overview of you. So Steve has been in the business for quite a while. From uh, what city are you from originally? Well, I call it Atlanta home. Okay, Atlanta home. And uh, you retired Navy? Nope. He just got out. I should have retired. <laughs> just got out. Okay. And he was a recruiter. And so I heard you saying that you heard no a lot and you oh, kept yeah. making a lot of calls. So I think it got ingrained into your head that you just, you keep going, right? No, no with some expletives behind it <laughs> all the time. Okay. Now I'm not talking about your dating life. I meant oh, the, yeah, the, when you were calling oh, the recruiting. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm totally kidding. So, uh, but Steve, uh, Steve is uh, just great at call conversion. Um, he is, you purchase leads. You've mm -hmm. got a pretty good budget for that, right? Yeah and um, he is really good at it, which is why I wanted to get him. So again, we always talk about social farming. We talk about all the people that have to, um, you know, keeping in contact, going to every event you're, you're invited to, all that. But a lot of times if you're moving into a new area, um, and let's say you don't know anybody, a, a great way to get started in the business, Ethan, right, is to buy leads, which is what Ethan's doing with Red X. And how long have you been buying leads? And do you mind talking about like, you don't have to tell you exactly where they come from, but how did no, you get I, into buying leads? I, I, I uh I've been buying leads for a few years now. Um, Zillow, uh, I've tried. I've tried pretty much all of them. Homes.com, um, uh, buy at, at Google AdWords, ads through the site. Um, Realtor.com probably. Well, back when they were selling leads, they're not selling them anymore mm -hmm, unless mm -hmm. something changed. But yeah. Right. Right. Um, okay. So, and I was talking to. Um, can I can I say something? Please do. There? Who who's in charge of the little bleep button? The little. You know, <laughs> Because you might want to keep your finger on it. With you me. know what? Just be you, man. Let <laughs> right. it out. Let it out. If let I say out. the F word, is that cool? Or yep. can we like? Yes, we're okay, doing cool. it. All right. So, um, so my question would be: um, are, uh, There's two types of leads, right? There's the leads that just a billion people call in, and you just never know what you're going to get. And then there's the scrubbed leads, right? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between the two? In your experience, you know what? I mean, some some of the leads, like Zillow is supposed to be scrubbed, but they don't really, you know, they, they don't really scrub them that well. Uh, I know uh, Realtor.com used to, yes. um, they, they would scrub them a lot better. Mm -hmm. But what they what they change over to? What was the? Like, Op City, yeah. So so when you started getting Op City leads, now you're paying 35%, but they're they're actually, you know, finding out if they have a realtor, you know, if they're working with someone. Zillow's supposed to, well, I don't even know if they're supposed to do it, but we'll get a, we'll get a call from Zillow. They're not. They're not really scrub. Well, and Amber, do you know what scrub means? You know what we're talking about. Um, why don't you? Okay. Well, okay. I just want to make sure. So, for the newer people out there watching, so there are two different types of leads. There's people that just buy leads, and everything, and every, anything, and everything comes in. You can get a, a ten thousand dollar lot in Barstow, and then you can get a mobile home, and yep. people are calling and saying, well, "Why are you calling me? What happened? Where did this come from?" Uh, that's a standard purchase, and then the other purchase are the scrub leads, and that's where um, somebody calls in, and when they call in or when they text in the company that you're buying the leads from actually goes back to them and scrubs them. Are you, are they a real person? Are they actually looking to buy? You know, would mm -hmm. they like to set up an appointment? Like there, that's the difference. You're gonna pay a lot more for a scrubbed lead. So scrubbers um, are people that are making sure that the leads you take are actually valid. However, right. pretty big, significant difference in the price that yep. you pay per lead, right? Would yep. you mind, like what do you, what do you pay per lead if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it depends, like Zillow, um, it's about 250 bucks a lead. Uh, the leads through my website, I'll get through my Boomtown site. I'm spending about twenty, twenty-two hundred bucks a month, and eighty to nine. Just tell people, agents that are that are calling the leads. I mean, some some of them think they're they're bad leads. Anytime someone goes to a website and puts in their information, you actually get that person on the phone. They're looking for something. They might not be looking now, um, but they're looking. For, but there's some of them, you know. Like we'll have, like last week, Jenny had a, a little little kid, a couple of times, like little kids, you know, like oh, I'm only 15 and I'm gonna buy my million dollar house, and you're like, oh god, keep you that, just, no, keep you that just number. Wasted though. my rotation, uh, kid. I paid 250 website. bucks for this call. Right, you know, yeah. but um, it, it really depends. And there's there's sites out there that. Um, 
like there's one called verified, ver, verified real estate leads where you pay per lead. They're not expensive, but you know, they're, they're not really that great a lead either, but you know, it, it's a numbers game. Well, and let's talk about that. So a lot of people when they are buying leads or even people that have joined the team now, I, I will tell you, it, it is hard to go from a social farmer to a cold call converter. I mean, would you agree? I mean, I mean, it's a big difference. Yeah. And so some of the agents that have come over that, that come onto teams like yours, um, they have a heck of a time because they're not used to know. They're used to people that they know, people that want to work with them. Um, but with you, I know you get a ton of leads coming in, but what percentage of the number of leads that come in would you say are actually convertible? Are convertible? Mm -hmm. I, I would probably say maybe 10% Okay. Convertible. So. I mean, a lot of them are... I mean, some of them are long term, you know, that you, you have to work them. You really right. have to work them. And, right. You know, you'll get like, like, I'll just give an example. The other day, like two days, yesterday, yesterday, the day before, um, we had just, me and my girlfriend just got back from Vegas. We, we uh, came to her house and I was like, let's go get a massage. I had this lead come in, a woman. She wanted, you know, to look at homes. And then she says, no, I got something, something came up. I can't look. I'm like, all right, cool. So we're like, let's go get a massage. So we went and we got an hour. And then I told the woman, give me, a, give us another half hour. So we we're in an hour and a half massage. When I came out, it was like 3.30. She texted me at 2 o'clock. She goes, you know what? Things have changed. Let's go look. I didn't get that text until 3.30. And then by the time I got a hold of her, she had found another agent. And she was looking at $1.3 million homes, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, you have to be like on top of them. Mm -hmm. you know, when they come in and keep your phone by you. I mean, I, you know, mm -hmm. absolutely. But you have to live your life too. Absolutely. And that is the hard part. Um, right. So, so, uh, but that, that goes back to this too. Um, but I'm a caller. I'm gonna keep calling. Her. So, so, so let's say that 10%, like you said, 10% of the, the hundred mm -hmm. um, are convertible. How many actually convert? And, and this is a conversation you've had, you and I have had a million times because people have joined your team or, or tried to do something and they'll go through 10 or 20 calls and be like, this isn't for me. This sucks. I don't want to do it. I, you know, but realistically, it is a numbers game, right? Yeah. So um, you think maybe 3% actually convert? 10% are convertible, but 3% actually convert? 3 would be, yeah, that, yeah. That's the frustrating part, um, is so many people think that they're just gonna be like, hi, uh, this is Bill, uh, can you come list my house? That's not how those calls work, No. right? So can we talk about how the calls actually work? Yeah, I mean, mo most of the time when you get on the, when you get on the phone with someone, they're, they're they're apprehensive because first of all, they don't, they didn't, ex most of the time they don't expect to get a phone call. Like the Zillow ones kind of do. They know they're connecting them to a call. Sometimes we'll get on, you know, Zillow will call me and say, hey, uh, we have so-and-so, uh, you, know, you, you, have, you have a lead coming in. Then the agent will get on and say, oh, they dropped off. And then I'll try to call, there's my phone, look at that, spam. Anyway. If he uh, gets a call, he's gonna take it by the way right now. Yeah, I'm serious, that's, that's we, we already decided. If, if Zillow calls, we're gonna get on the phone. Yeah, won't that be fun? Put on speaker. Um, what was, what was your question? Oh, uh, I was just talking about kind of um, the conversion and keeping them on the phone as well. It, so, what I what I what I typically do is I'll when I when I talk to them, I'll try to you know find out like if they if they're looking at a particular house, I'll say hey you know um, I saw you looking at this house in in Canyon Lake. Um, did you want to go take a look at it? Oh yeah yeah I want to look at it. And then I'll go into asking them you know try to try to um, ask them you know do you have a realtor? It really depends on. The, the vibe I get from them. Sometimes, you know, they're very apprehensive and I want to get them in the house. If I, if I have time, I want to get them in front of them right away. I know there's a, there's a, a school of thought that um, you don't take anybody out to look at houses until, until they're qualified. I'm not going to take you and look at 30 houses if you're not qualified, even five houses. I might take it at one or two because I want to get in front of someone because I can, now I can read their body language. I can see, you know, how are they, uh, you know how they're how they're reacting to me and try to build that rapport. Um, I had a, a woman the other day. She was a she was a her husband was a manager for Chick Fil A and she was an event co coordinator for Chick Fil A. And it was it was kind of you know I said oh I go I eat at Chick Fil A I try to like you know like build a little rapport just joking around with her. And then we went when we were going to Vegas I, uh, there was a Chick Fil A and I hadn't met her yet. There was a Chick Fil A in the airport and I took a picture of it and sent it to her. I'm like I'm I'm you know I'm but it was a word, I'm, I'm at your business, you know, I and mean, she kind of laughed. So I, I just kind of try to build that rapport that way versus going like hard in 
on, you know, asking real estate questions because, you know, like we were talking earlier, um, we get calls every day from salespeople. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm like, not interested, hang up. You know, you, you have to try to build that rapport quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so let's talk about that. Um, so a call comes in, you always try to answer it. Oh yeah. Like no matter what, like I mean, you're out on a date, a call comes in. I've been on the toilet with your girlfriend. This phone. <laughs> okay. I'm, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna bullshit you. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, and then what if you miss the call? Like, what's, what's your like rule, even for your team members, on how fast they have to get um, back to a missed call or into a, to a lead? Um, well, I mean, it depends on if Zillow. If you miss a call, you're done. Um, if, if I get a call and I miss it, I'll, I'll get on it right away. Call right back. I like to, I like to have, you know like my team members call within a few minutes, but I also, also have part of Boomtown, they have, there's a concierge, so they're calling, texting right away. Um, Can you explain that a little bit more? So yeah, when the lead comes in, they, they fire off a text, um, an email goes out, and then the concierge picks up the phone and tries to call and talk to them. That's the scrub. And try, they try to scrub them. And, and you know, they, they've, we've had a few that, you know, They've actually scrubbed out. They're not very um, effective, but it's you know getting people on the phone. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of people just don't answer their phone nowadays. So, so if they don't, you know, they're not in, if they don't answer their phone, I'll call them right back. Mm -hmm. And then if they answer their phone and they're pissed, I'll say, oh, sorry, I was gonna, I was trying to leave you a voicemail, and you know something happened, something's wrong with, I don't know if it's your phone or my phone, but you know, and then you just go, try to go into a conversation. And then if they don't answer, I'll send them a text. Sometimes, mm -hmm. just depends, but because they, I don't, I don't want them to know, you know. And I also have two numbers on my phone, so with Verizon, I can, I have a dual SIM, so I have a, an Orange County number and a Riverside County number, so I can, you know, if, if they don't answer on this line, I'll call them on another line. Right, try right. To get a hold of them. Um, okay, so I want to give an example too of like somebody that was su successful with you. So, so I know like when you first started with the company, we you, you started out with a few buyers agents, and it's like. Um, it's almost like a crapshoot there too. Like they're either going to get used to that system and be able to take those types of, uh, you know, handle those situations, or they're not, right? right? So, and some people are cut out for it, and some people aren't. But I remember um, Jenny's first deal, and I remember how many times she followed up and all that sort of stuff too. And that's when we knew like she was going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? Do you remember exactly how that one went? Because yeah, I mean, she, she's she's uh, like she'll call and call and call and call and call and get these people. But I think her. You know, she she called one time and it was her sixth call, and I was like, "That's the that's pretty much the magic number." You know, you call these people six times, you just have to keep you know call them at different times because when you know if you call them at nine in the morning, they might work from you know nine to five, and so try calling them in the evening. And she got a hold of, I mean, she's gotten a hold of a few people just by relentlessly calling them. And she converted it. So it took mm -hmm. on her sixth call, she finally got them to pick up. So oh, and then they had then not only that, but their. I think their mother and and their mother's ex-husband have all bought houses. He's in escrow and another one from that same. And she's been with you since like January, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, she's, so like I said, you're either cut out for it or you're not. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. Um, so when you get somebody, so let's say that finally she does get somebody on the call. And you and I talked about this a little bit before, like, um, when I have always studied lead conversion and all that stuff, it says that basically the key, and this goes for anybody that you guys don't know, is to keep them on the phone for five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, and, and you're always trying to lead them to the appointment, right? And right. you said you're trying to get in front of them as quick as possible. But I wanted to just give you some ideas of a couple questions that you guys can ask if you ever, is anybody interested in those questions? So I can tell you it follows along. Um, and uh, Steve and I talked about it. But number one is, what do you like about the house? That's, if you can start getting them to talk and answer questions, because remember, they don't care about you. They care about talking themselves, right? So number one, what do you like about the house? Number two, how long have you been looking? That's the big one. Number three, um, are you currently renting? That's a big one too, right? Mm -hmm. Gives it, because now Steve knows, or we know their situation of whether or not, oh no, I have something to sell, whatever, which leads to the fourth question, do you have something to sell? And the fifth question is, what cities are you open to? Yeah. And then you just let the conversations go where they go, right? Because I know, like Steve uses his personality and he's likable and all that sort of stuff. And I think that's rule number one in real estate, you have to be likable. So if you're not, you're doomed, right? I mean, pretty much. I mean, there are some square introverts that make it, but generally you have to be a likable person. Right. So, um, and then another thing, I think you went out with an agent one time, and I know it was like a $1.3, $1.4 million buyer. I think it took you guys a while to get that person on the hook, but you finally got them out to show them a property, right? Yeah. Do you mind sharing a little bit about how you handled that? Well, 
let me go back to one of the one of the questions on the phone I always ask too, and it kind of covers mm -hmm. what you were saying. Is I'll say, are you are you moving into the area, or do you already live here, right? So that kind of tells me if they already live here, they're probably trying to sell a house. If they're moving into the area, hey, you know, I, I, I can show them around, tell them what good restaurants to go to, whatever. But the the other story. Um, we had the charcuterie boards uh, for Christmas, and I had a, like a couple of them. Actually, no, I didn't. I, I we were we, we we got a lead in, and the woman wanted to go look at um, a house out in wine country. It was like a like a million dollar home, and and one of the one of my buyer's agents had that you know lead, and she was like you know kind of worried about you know do I you know, she was going to set an appointment. I had talked to the agent the day before because I had another client that was looking at that home. And I said, just tell, text her right now and say, I'll see you, we, I'll see you there at one o'clock. And she goes, okay. So she starts texting. And I said, or read me the text. She goes, um, would one o'clock be okay? I go, no, 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 go back. We'll see you there at one o'clock. So she's like, really? I go, yeah. So I said, We'll see you there at one o'clock. So I called the, the other agent. They go, hey man, I'm gonna show your house again at one o'clock. He's like, all right, cool. On the way out the door, they had all the sh charcuterie boards sitting up on the front counter. I said, let me get one of those charcuterie boards. And I took it in the car and I said, keep this in the car. And I'm, I was letting her handle the whole, you know, the interaction with the, with the client. I said, keep this in the car. And if they're an asshole, we're not giving it to them. <laughs> but at the end, if they're really cool, you know, if everything's going well, get it out of the car. So, you know, we, we talked to them, everything was, seemed to be going good. They had, a, they had a house in Orange County that they wanted to sell for $2 million too. So I looked at her and I go, you know, I kind of like signaled to her to go get the charcuterie board. So she goes like, gets the charcuterie board and hands it to the woman. And the woman's like, oh my God, I just love you. You're the best. You know, just like, just was like going nuts over her. People are bribable. <laughs> That's the bottom line. And, it, and it's, you know, a, a charcuterie board, I mean, 25 bucks. Yeah. Right. So, um, but, but when, so Steve just has a nice soft approach when he's dealing with the clients too. So it's just, it's just getting them to that appointment, right? I mean, yeah. that's the real key because people are, are so mean on the phone, but they're so nice in person. Yeah. Right. So it's just trying to get that person in front of you. Um, so, okay. So I'm going to go back. So, um, I know back in the day, about two years ago, the leads were, um, realtor.com. So I know one of my friends is on a team out of area, and she's on a big team, big team. And so they have what's called, um, I, I don't think it's, it's not the, it's the round robin approach, no. Where basically blast. if, blast. So let's say that all of you guys are my buyer's agents. A call comes in, all of your phones ring at the same time. The first person to grab that call is going to get that lead. Then once they grab that call, it drops into their, um, uh, their system, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And um, what would happen is when a Zillow lead would come in, would call in, it would just ring and ring and ring. But when a Realtor.com lead would call, would call in, they would jump on that like crazy, like fighting to get to their phone, knocking people down because they were scrubbed back but, in the day. But you weren't the only one that got the, you weren't, you weren't the only one that got the number. Everybody still got the number. So if there was five agents, they all got that number. And while you're on the phone, you, you, hear, you can hear the client like hesitating and like, <laughs> oh, is your phone ringing? Don't worry about it. Don't answer that. Beep, beep, you're just, beep. Next time you need anything, just call me. Don't, you know, you're going to have a bunch of agents. And I would try to keep them on the phone like 10 minutes just to squash all that other stuff. That was, that was like the main reason for keeping them on the phone because I didn't want them to hang up. And then another agent calls and talks to them and, you know, mm -hmm. tells them I'm an asshole or something. And then I'm out. You yeah, know I mean? that's pretty funny. Um, okay, so Ethan, you're doing, you're using a program right now where you're calling expireds, right? And you said that you've called 200 so far this week. Right, and you got to hold a one or two. Is your goal on these conversations to get an appointment? Right, that's all you're thinking about when you're talking to these people. Right, get, face -to -face. get an appointment, get an appointment, get an appointment, get an appointment. Um, and are you looking up scripts? Yes, I use uh, a few scripts actually. Mike Ferry scripts. Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry. Okay, good. That's great. <clears throat> that's great. I kind of adjusted it to my personality. It's okay. Not robotic. Right, that's the kind of guy you need in your team. Not remote, yeah. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, him, because he's not afraid to make those calls. 200 calls, and he's taken some beatings, you know, it sounds like, right? Some pretty gnarly ones. Yeah. So, um, okay, so if you don't mind me asking one more time, um, if, if I'm a new agent and I have a really limited budget and I want to buy leads and I just want to get started, I don't care if it's in Lake Elsinore, I don't care if it's in Wildemar, you know, Temecula, Corona, where would you spend How, your small, limited budget? What's the, what's the budget? 
Um, give me a budget, guys. Thousand bucks. Oh, a thousand bucks? That's a pretty good budget. Five hundred yeah. bucks. Five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. Uh, you know what? Um, Homes.com does. I mean, you can get in there fairly cheap. Um, I just dumped them because I, I was I was buying Huntington Beach and I was getting. You know, when you buy Huntington Beach, you're like, I want the million dollar homes out there, and I'm getting trailer parks. Mm. You know, so. I, I got a fair amount of leads from them, but not what I wanted, so I just I just canceled it. I, I think I was paying like six hundred bucks a month just for that lead source. Um, what about Zillow? Zillow's yeah, yeah, like with for a thousand dollars a month in Zillow, you're, you're like you'll get like two or maybe two leads, three leads, yeah. like like a couple of direct connects, and then the rest of them are, are what are they call nurture leads. Mm -hmm. Um, you really have to, in order for Zillow to work, you have to spend a lot more on Zillow every month. Yes? What about Redfin? My, one of my friends are Redfin agents. What about them? So they, they, you don't pay for the lead, you pay for the transaction. Basically, um, like OpCity is kind of the same, right? Yeah. Where some of these companies... But, uh, it's like 35%. It's a oh, I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't know. Well, damn, you gave me an idea. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, it's a referral. The red fan. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't yeah. pay anything. That's well, and part of the kick, and part of the kicker with that is I know like um, like through Relo, you know, through like Realogy Relo companies, like if you get a lead, you end up paying like your split. You pay thirty five percent to yep. the company, all that stuff. So you only end up getting like forty five percent of it. But but if you are over at the corporate offices or if if you have a Relo account, people fight for that. Because yes, it's you're only going to get paid a couple thousand bucks, a few thousand bucks. But the big kicker in that is you've won that client. Like he was just saying, the lady that he, that got called six times, um, what is that? A mother, a stepfather. You know, I mean, yeah. you get more leads out of that. So the real successful agent is trying to is willing to take the the hit on the first couple of deals to get those family members because once you get it in the system, which is what else what else we were talking about is. You know, Steve was saying he converts them once they are a sold lead or once, so they come in cold, but then they go into the warm database. And then he's got his group that, you know, and do you mind talking about how you keep in contact with those people after you sell them something? Um, I mean, it, they're, they're just listed as past clients and I, like I'll, I'll try like on Thanksgiving and Christmas and like holidays all and throughout the year. You know, some, some clients that were a nightmare I don't really keep in touch with, but most of them I'll go through and, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Like, I'll, like one of my best friends is a, was a client of mine. That's how I met him. I met him in an open, him and his wife in an open house. And they, you know, they told me the other day, they said, Steve, they have a little daughter. And they were going, you know, they were traveling to LA and their daughter was in preschool. And she called me and she goes, you're it. If anything ever happens to us, you're it. And I'm like, hmm, I've already got five. No, I mean, I'm like, you know, I'll take good care of your daughter, but, you know, I mean, I love them to death, but they were a client of mine. And you just, you know, and that, that, that's the thing that I, you know, as far as, like, when I talk to, the, you know, my leads and when I get in front of people, I try to make a connect, like a real connection with them. And, you know, I'm always in my uh, conversations with, you know, if you need anything, let me know. I'm here, like, 24-7 ever need anything let me know and I'll always follow up and I'll always get back to them um, you know even in past clients I'm you know always you know just, like I'll just think of them and I'll shoot them a text hey what's going on you know and mm -hmm. you just have to keep in touch because these people are gonna you know they're gonna refer I mean they, my the same people just refer to a guy that's selling and buying and his mom's selling in Vegas you know and I've got a referral already going out there and they're they're gonna list their house probably in, within the next couple of weeks you know right. and, you just have to keep on top of them. If you take a client and you sell them a house and then you never talk to them again, which I've done, we all, everybody's done it, um, and you find out they, they sold their house and you're like, oh, shit, I should have followed up better, you know? Yep. And I even, I mean, most all top producers would say that's their biggest fault too is they don't follow yeah. up. So, um, you know, and, and the kicker is I think this is just an idea for you guys to create that big social farm. Right, because that's what we want. We want that social farm. We want that database. We want people that are going to use us. We want to be able to to implement our own um, programs on them, right? Which is the lotto cards for, you know, for St. Patrick's Day. Which is the text that they're going to get for Memorial Day. It's the checking in phone call in June. You know, so it's just a way, especially because there's so many new people out there. I mean, I think we have 
over 120 people in the company now that have less than three deals because they're all new. So many people came in during this COVID time and they don't know how to get started. Um, you know, but I will tell you that it is easier to ask for business from the people you know. Amber, how long have you lived in the area? Okay, so you have to be looking more at a program like this if you've only been here for a year. Well, I've got family in the area. That's good. Family, but and open houses yes. and going to everything you're invited to. Mm -hmm. You know, so you really are, and it's, this is not a negative. I mean, it is, it's a little tougher, but like he was saying, he calls Atlanta home. He was in the service. You've lived, didn't you live on the East Coast too for a mm -hmm. while? So for Steve, this is how he has to operate because this, he wasn't born and bred here. You know what I mean? So it's really easy if you graduated from high school here, you went to UC Riverside, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's like no problem. So uh, this is just a way to build that database. But I just want to make sure that, you know, like he was saying, a lot of these leads take time to, um, to cultivate and what they call is to incubate. And so they say on Zillow and on all the, if you watch any you know, of these online lead sources, whether it's filter.com or whatever, that it takes 14 months to convert. Yeah. Would you agree I with mean, that? It, it can, yeah. Some of them, I mean, you're very rarely, I'm trying to think of how many times, I've probably only had two people call me up and say, hey, I wanna, I wanna go look at this house, and then we wrote an offer on that house. It just, it doesn't happen like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, going back to what you were saying about, you know, if you're, if you're, new in the area like right now i'm i'm trying to i have I have a good business going to riverside in this area but i'm trying to move to my uh, my personal business over to like orange county because the price points are higher um, my girlfriend lives there and i i mean i like the climate there better and so her 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 dad's like a uh, he's on the board for the yacht club in seal beach and, they, and he was like, oh, you should join the yacht club. I'm like, all right, I'm in. Cool. let's do it. You know what I mean? I don't have a yacht. I'll show up with a canoe or something, you know? <laughs> um, but we, we went to the yacht club and you know, one of the first day, first meetings that we were there, everybody was standing around talking and this woman comes walking in, she's an esthetician. And, and all the ladies are like, oh, you're an esthetician. Oh, I need to get your card. And I said, shit. I said, I'm a realtor. Anybody need my card? Like that. And the woman looks at me, she goes, you know what? I was looking at selling my house and I'm like, Mm, okay, cool, you know, and, and I'm like working up comps on our house right now, but you just, you have to like get involved, like I'm a, I'm a member of the Freemasons in, in Temecula, and I've gotten a, you know, you don't join to get deals, you join because it's something you like to do, like I'm, I'm in the photography club in Temecula, it's just something I like to do, I go there and, you know, and through conversations with people, they get to know who you are, and you, you know, that's what you kind of have to do. The other thing, uh, you said um, uh, open houses. Get on the MLS, search for vacant listings, and then call that realtor and say, hey, can I do an open house? No, we don't do that. Call the next one. Call the next one. Call the next one. And then set it up for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you're going to sit in open houses and no one's going to walk in. I don't know about in this market. Probably not. But it, with you know, open houses just starting back up. Right. So you just go in there and you, you know, you get their name and number and they're going to come in. And they're going to tell you, well, I have a, I have a realtor and they're all right, cool. Who's your realtor? Uh, what's his name? Mm -hmm. uh, that means you know. they don't have one. All right. You know, and then you just, you just start talking to them talk to them about their kids. What do you do for work? Where are you from? Where are you moving in from? And there's, 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 you have to like pay attention for cues to connect with that person. Right. Uh, the other day I had a, a, a woman on the phone and I could hear a southern accent and I'm like, where are you from? She's like, well, I'm from Atlanta. I said, well, no shit, what part of Atlanta? And we just started talking and it, it was like instant rapport, you know? I know where you're coming from, you know what I mean? I know where you're coming from and I'm here where you want to be and you just start connecting like that. And that's, for me, that's the key, you know, talking about real estate, you can like filter in those questions throughout your conversations or through your call, but it's connecting with the person and, and building a real connection with them that's gonna keep them coming back to you. It's not, it's not trying to sell them a house. If you go in with commission breath and you're like, you know, oh, hey, you wanna go look at houses this week? You wanna go look at houses? You know, I'll text Pete, my clients throughout the week and I'm like, hey, what's going on? You need anything? You know, everything good? You know, or, or how was this, how was whatever? I mean, the things that I talk to them about, not even bringing up real estate and they'll come back, you know, and ask me about real estate. One of my clients thinks real estate agents are like, you know, Al Bundy sitting on the couch, you know, with your hand in your, 
you know, just sitting there waiting on the phone to ring. And when the phone rings, we jump into action. So I'll send him pictures of Al Bundy, you know, sitting on the couch. And I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's got two more houses that he wants to list. Mm -hmm. You just have to keep that. You have to build a connection. Right. Right. And, and I want to add one thing too. So, and, and what I like about Steve's team, well, a couple things. I'm going to step back, but I'm going to come back to what I like about your team. Um, the first thing is, do you remember how he was saying that he's a member of the Freemasons, you know, the yacht club, all that sort of stuff. That's the fun part of this business. That's the stuff that if you are a social animal, I live for that stuff. Just these people in this room, this crowd right here, like what everybody's going to talk about afterwards and stuff. Like if you're not excited about being around people like this, then maybe this isn't the business for you, right? Um, but that's one piece of the pie. So going to everything you're invited to is really, really big. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, not being afraid to ask for business from your family and your friends and all that, now, which you don't have here, right? Mm -hmm. So again, he has to take it a little bit more, but you're getting there, I mean, right? I mean, because you've got like... I have a little bit of family here. Okay, we, so you're getting yeah. there. Um, and then another piece is going to be, you know, your mailers and your contact systems and your texts and all that sort of stuff. But think of this piece, and this is what I like about Steve's business, is think of this as one piece of your business. There are people that make online lead gen and calls like this 100% of their business, and it's a turn it and burn it business. They get them in, they get them out, they never keep in contact with them again, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone. I don't think that's a sustainable business to keep you happy in this business. Right. Would, you, would you agree? Oh, for sure. So, like he was saying, he keep, he's building relationships all the time and texting them and sending the Al Bundy pictures and all that stuff. That's the fun stuff. That's why we're here. That's what we love. So your goal is to get to the point where this is, can remain a piece of your business, but it's your likability and your life because I like this. Somebody said this the other day. As a real estate agent, you are always on 100% of the time, 100% of the day, every single day, whether you're at the grocery store, whether you're getting your hair done, whether you're buying a pair of shoes. You are always on. And it's unfortunate, right? Because if you're not, you go get a massage at 2 o'clock, and by 3.30, that client's gone, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be on all the time, which you either love it or you don't. You know, but that's the success is you're on all the time. Right. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. So, um, so anyway, so you've talk, talked a little bit about, you know, the lead sources and, and converting those calls and all that stuff. Um, one of the things that was a suggestion, too, is when you, and I thought this was interesting. Christy, I'd actually be interested in hearing your take on this. Um, do you give them the address of the property when they call you? Oh, yeah. So he's not afraid to do that. There are a lot of people that won't do that. You know what I'm saying? Most of the, most of the people that that I talk to already have an address. Okay. Are you are you saying if somebody calls? Well, a lot of these teams they don't have they're they're fishing with properties out there. They'll give no address. They'll give no price. You have to call to try to get that information. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't. Okay. It's it's like it's like running a blind ad. You know. I mean, people. I think people are keen to that. You know. I I, I would rather. I mean, we got we get we're getting a lot of leads, so I'd rather just you know, like, give them what they want, kind of filter through them because it, again, it's a, it's a numbers game. You're going to have people that are going to, you know, uh, just waste your time and you know, I, it, like you know, like the little kids. Um, it's it's just getting in front of enough people and you know, honestly taking care of them, and I I, I just I don't believe in that's kind of playing games. You think it's me. a trick. Of course. I right. Mean, for me, it is. I mean, it might work for some people. That's great. You know? I know on some teams, uh, I know, and I'm referring to one in particular, um, whenever there is a property that is up for sale, even if it's available or not, they will set an appointment to meet out on the front of that property, whether the property mm -hmm. is an escrow or not. Oh, wow. They will. And, and they might get there and say, oh, by the way, this is an escrow, but I brought two other properties to go take a look at. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would, no, I, I, would, I would talk to them on the phone and tell them, you know, we'll keep an eye on it, but... Right now it's an escrow, but I've got I've got a couple others. Let's you know let's go look at these. What about this one? You know what? This one is sold, but there's a four bedroom, three bath that's just hitting the market, and this thing is going to go fast. I'll be surprised if it lasts a day. Are you available? Come in Thursday at one. I can't give you any information, but Thursday at one to take a look at it. Uh, it's going to be gone. I just want to let you know it's just hitting the market. Uh, and then they say, okay, all right, all right. So come to my office, and then we'll zip over and take a look at it. Can you see right through that? And then they go. And then they hang up the phone and then they're like, okay, now I got to go find a four bedroom, three bath. <laughs> That's just coming up right now. I mean, I'm just kidding. People use all kinds of stuff. I, I mean, if, the, if it works for them, great. I just, I, I, I don't, I, I can see right through that. If somebody did that to me on the phone, I'd be like, okay, you know, this guy's full of. Okay. All right. No, I'm just telling you what some of the other teams do. Oh, wow. um, now, here, here's another thing. Can I talk about your structure? Sure. Your team, your yeah, team yeah, structure? Yeah, for sure. So one of the things that I like about his team structure, so you guys know there's all types of teams. I don't know if you guys know that. There are the teams, which is like the club wealth team. 
um, where basically, so if, if it's Steve's team, you're on the team, all of your business, all of your signs, everything you do will be the Steve, but what's the name of your team again? Well, I, I mean, it, you're changing Batiste it right group, now. but it was. Okay, so the signs will say the Batiste group, and then it would say Christian Cook, you know, or something like that, or, and then everything you do runs through him. You're on a, usually a 45 to a 50% split, and they will provide you the leads. Okay, that, and, but let me just tell you this. If you're gonna do that, you might as well just get a job because that is no different than having a job. You gotta be on those calls at 7.30 in the morning, going through every lead that they possibly yeah. gave you. Um, you they, they own you. You are basically and, an employee if you're on that sort of team. And if your mom sells her house? It, it's the Steve Batiste group that lists it. Right? right yeah, right. so yeah, right. Steve's team is different. Um, do you mind sharing your structure? Because I, I love your structure. Your structure is like the dream deal. Basically, I, I do a 60-40 split. Um, any lead that comes in, if you convert them, if they buy if they buy two houses right now, split. If a year goes by, or if they buy two houses and then their cousin wants to buy a house, I don't want any part of that. You're they're yours. After that year, you, they're your lead. You you just I mean, it, I, I was on a team uh, back in back in the beginning when I first started, and I hated it. I hated the you know, like this guy was like every day, eight o'clock, you had a meeting and he was club wealth. Mm -hmm. um, everything you did, like I, I would, I was making, you know, like 700 uh, expired calls a, a week, just like dialing, 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 dialing and setting appointments. And he was, you know, benefiting from that. So, you know, I, I also like my agents, if they work their own deals, if they're like calling expireds on their own, I don't, I don't want any part of it. I just, you just, it's, it's almost like Op City. Here you go, here's your lead, work it. You know, if, if it, you know, if it closes, then I get a percentage of it, that's it. Isn't that cool? So you get to use your own name. It's basically, you're gonna pay a referral for it. And um, he's not making you be on a call every single morning, but like, that's the way, I, that's why I like his team so much because you get to build your business along the way. And, and I've had, and I've actually, I've actually helped, you know, and I, I'm available like 24 seven, you know, if people have questions, want to talk, you know, they have de like even their deals that they're working. I remember Jenny had a deal when we first started and she put in the, in the, uh, in the contract, I think it was 5,000 over appraised value. It was three, three, three hundred fifty thousand dollars or five thousand over appraised value and the um the the agent says the, the, the appraisal came in at 325 and so her client was gonna pay 330 and the other agent says nope we're just gonna back out and put it back on the mls and and jenny was you know kind of having a hard time with it and i said i said and this was her deal i had nothing to do with it and i said are you at the office she goes yep i said stay there i'm gonna be right there and i walked in there and i and and uh and she was she was sitting in the front office, and I go, you need to th learn three words in in real estate. And she goes, what's that? And I said, f that shit. <laughs> and she's like, kind of looking, because Jenny's a very she, I don't think I've ever heard Jenny cuss at all. And she kind of like sat back, and I said, that ain't happening. That's not happening. It's in the contract. That's not happening. And so we got on the phone. We called the the lawyer. We called Tom. And then I said, and I said. It, you know, now we're going to write an email to this other agent, and we're going to say we've talked to corporate counsel. It's in the contract. It's five thousand over appraised value. You agreed to it, so you can either sell it to us for that, or we're going to have you know we're going to have issues. And guess what? They took it. They took it. I, I, I'm always you know I, I I want I want you know the agents to be successful because I feel like you know that's that brings more value to the team versus having you know, a, a slave driver, you know, do you make these calls? Who, who, are you, who are you talking to? I don't even think like, I mean, I talk to Jenny now, you know, a couple of times a week. Rose Norwood's on the team. Um, I don't think I've talked to her in a week. I know she's working, you know, she's, she's another one. She's like going hard at it, you know, working these, mm -hmm. these leads. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's all about, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I do enough deals, but you know, it's all about helping people out. I mean, even your clients, it, that you have to have that mentality that you're there to help them and l like legitimately there to help them not to make a commission because they can feel that. They, just like you can feel it. When somebody's trying to sell you, you know they're trying to sell you and you're like, you kind of like, you know, you kind of back off from them. If, you, if somebody walks into an open house and you're like, hey, let me show you the house, and you, know, you take them around all this stuff, 
they know they know you're trying to sell. If you if they walk in an open house and you're like, hey, how you doing? Where are you guys from? You know, oh, you got kids? Where your kids go to school? And you start talking to them and like building rapport, they're gonna be like, man, she's really nice. I'm gonna use, I really like her. I'm gonna use her. That's what you have to do, because those relationships are gonna carry on. You know, a year from now, two years from now, and these people are gonna keep coming back to you. And five years from now, you ain't gonna have to make phone calls. You're not gonna have to make how many calls you made this week. You won't have to, because you know people will be like, "Man, this guy like really took care of us." You know, we were talking about that too. He said that he had a, a client that was asking him to handle a double ender sale for two percent, and he turned it down. I well, I, this, he was a Russian guy. So, he was super nice. Him and his wife, they were out looking, and they we we got him into escrow on a house um, down in uh, oh hell, in Temecula. It was like a nine hundred eighty thousand dollar house. And the inspector called out, you know, he looked, saw a crack on the side of his house. He said, you might want to get a structural engineer to take a look at that. I'm like, all right. I'm like, oh, crap, you know. Structural engineer comes out. It's a four-hour inspection. And I had, I, had to, I had to be somewhere. So I left my client there with the structure. It was an Airbnb. It was currently being used as an Airbnb. When I left, the neighbor across the street came over and was like, well, you should buy our house. You know, we're going to sell our house, too. And... He's like, okay. So we went over and took a look at it. They, there was a crack in the foundation. So he backed out of that house, called me up, and he said, hey, um, uh, we're going to buy the house across the street. And I'm like, what? He's like, uh, will you do it for 2%? And I said, like 2% on each side? He goes, no, total 2%. And I go, no, sorry, man. I just, I got, you know, I got to, you know, put food on the table. I'm not going to do it for 2%. Well, he found an agent in Temecula that would do it for 2%, the whole thing. So they got into escrow, and then the seller decided they didn't want to sell their house. And then he calls me up, and he's, and oh, back, back, let me back up. My first inclination was to cuss him out because I've been working with him, driving around all these houses. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, okay. You know, when I got off the phone, I was like, dang, you know, I was kind of pissed because after I found out he was in escrow. So then I, you know, I just, you know, laid low. About three weeks later, he calls me up. He goes, hey, um, can a seller just back out of a deal? I go, well, what would the contract say? He says, well, you know, they, they, they had to find a suitable replacement robbery. I said, did they? No. Then they can back out. So he's like, okay, well, they're backing out. We need to go look for another house. So I wind up selling a million-dollar house up in Duluth. But, if you know, had I, you know, taken that. Lost it. Right. I had a friend the other day, a good friend of mine, He's a, he's, he owns one of the, the uh, largest family uh, medical uh, uh, practices in, in, the, in this area. And I've known this guy for a long time, a really good friend of mine. He went and bought a house in Long Beach for like $1.5 million. And I'm like, dude, what the hell, you know? Like I gave him a bunch of crap over it. He didn't know I was working out in Long Beach. And that's my fault, you know? And a lot of agents get really mad. Like my brother got really mad. He didn't, didn't talk to his best friend in four months because his best friend sold his house to another agent. My brother's an agent. And uh, he, he won't even talk to him now. I'm like, bro, this guy's going to sell a house again, you know, and my buddy's going to sell a house again, and I'm going to make sure that I spend more time with him, you know, it's just because I like the guy. But, you know, it's my fault. It's your fault. If they don't buy the house from you, it's something you did, something you said, you know, you can't take it personal because mm -hmm. and, and it happens all the time. In one of the books that we're reviewing on Monday Motivation, <clears throat> the quote was, if people like you, they will find a way to use you. If they don't like you, they will find a way to not use you. Right. I mean, so that's another thing. So what we were talking about before is even back in the day when I was doing a lot of selling, like if somebody said, I'm going to go for a sell by owner, I would always say, no problem. Go for it. If you have any questions along the way, I'd be happy to help. Let me know whatever you need because yeah. it never goes. You guys know what I mean? And they're going to come back to you. So, and I love that idea. And that's something to never forget. Don't burn bridges. Do not burn bridges. Chris, you agree back there? I mean, I know, I'm sure you guys have dealt with that. So, um, so anyway, so that being the case, um, so we've got a little bit about, you know, how lead capture works, um, where you can find sources, uh, building rapport and how you do that, you know, basically trying to keep them on the phone for five to 10 minutes, which is what we are talking about. Uh, he also mentioned to me in, in conversation yesterday that when you do get somebody on the phone, you are when you're trying to find those commonalities with him, he'll pull up their Facebook or do the research for them right before they even get on the call, so that he can be looking through their stuff. Do you mind sharing? How, how do you do that exactly? Oh yeah, I, I have. Uh, I use with white, the cold calls. I use White Pages app, so I'll I'll put their number in, 
and if it matches their name, if it doesn't match their name, then I have another person to look at. So if it's like, you know, like Betty Smith and Joe Smith, right? Um, but what I'll, I'll do is I'll get on, like if it's a common name like that, you're not gonna, really gonna find anything on Facebook. But I'll get on Facebook and I'll put their name in and like go through their Facebook page and you know try to like stalk their social media so that I can get kind of an idea of who I'm talking to if I have if there's time. Like when Zillow calls, if I'm sitting in front of a computer, I'm usually pulling up the the, the listing to try to see you know because they they want to they want to go see the house so I'm like pulling up the listing so I act like I mean, most of these most of these people that call from Zillow think you're the listing agent. Uh, so I'll, I'll get in there and punch the you know the address in. Uh, if it's on my phone, you know there's a there's a button that takes you back to Zillow that shows you what house they're looking for. Um, but yeah, I'll get on I'll get on social media and like like start going through you know their their profile and seeing if there's any commonalities, you know, any things that they you know like where they're from, what they like to do. I like look at their about section to see what you know where they work, and then I'll try to build that into the conversation. To, you know, then they think, wow, this guy, you know, he's really cool. He's I got a friend that works at JPL. I work at JPL. <laughs> right, right. You're kidding me, right? right? So that's pretty cool. So Ethan, that's a pretty good idea for you for those 200 calls. Yeah. What if you could do some homework and actually find a little bit about them when you get on those conversations? Yeah, cool. Well, some of the some of those apps, like you're using uh, Red X. Does Red X have a does it have a uh, uh, a panel that shows you like social media? Some of them, some of them have that. Some of them will actually like pull that data in, like from social media platforms, and you can actually like pull up. I know. Does uh, White Pages do that? Uh, KV Core does it. I don't know. White Pages that do it, but okay. you can search White Pages. You can search by uh, address, by um, um, phone number, by email address. And I know uh, one of the other things I do is um, Becca gave me acts. I don't know. If she, She's really good, but she gave me access to a, a phone number, and all I do is text. If it's an address, I'll text the address to that phone number, and it brings back all the owner's information, phone numbers, email addresses, everything, and I'm just like, all right. Sometimes I'll give you like four numbers. I can't believe I didn't know about that. And then you start, you start clicking the, like calling each number, you know, and, and, and talking to those people. Like if, you, if there's an address and you want to know who owns the house, I mean, you can look on, you can look on, the, on the tax data, but... This gives you the numbers and the email addresses of the people in the house. So let me ask you this. So I'm driving by a house and I see that the yard is overgrown and this house, you know, so there's, a, there's a board here. on the window. I, I can text an address to this phone number yep. and it will send me back all the information on who yep. owns it. Yeah. Was that worth coming right there? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. So Ethan. It's a, it's a site too. It's called ivy.com. Yep. And they send you a text that you can call them. You can text that number. Anytime. You just have to pay. They give you a certain amount, and then you have to pay. I love that. It's like thirty cents. Well, this is. I mean, this is. This is all. You know. Yeah, it's free. I like free better, but. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, I mean, that's that's some valuable stuff. So, okay. So basically, we know that conversions are really only about three percent. So you're going to take a beating on those online conversions, no matter what, right? The real actual closings, if you're lucky. Yeah. Three out of a hundred. So, and so many people come in, like I said, to these teams or like Steve's team and expect somebody to call and say, I'm ready to buy, show me this house or come list my house and that's not how it works, right? So um, next thing is when you do reply to them, after you've had that conversation, I'm gonna send you my V card, make sure that you put the word realtor in there. Make sure you put the word no, realtor in there. Best realtor ever. Oh, I like and that you one. let them know that's coming, You're best realtor ever. So when you need somebody, you know, just click it in there. Right. Oh, that's a good one, I like that one. Put that in there. Um, and you guys know the questions now to keep them on the phone. Uh, follow-up system. So one, of the, one last question before we get out of here that I wanted to ask you is, so you would always tell me, like you would add people onto your team, they would get all these calls and leads and then they would never respond to anybody. And you were able to track the fact right. that well, a yeah. call came in that you're paying big bucks for and nobody responded to it. What program do you use to track how quickly they're responding to these leads as they come in? Well, I mean, I, any, any of the, like I use Boomtown and um, Real Geeks. By the way, if anybody wants a Real Geeks site, let me know because I get a referral fee for it. But, um, <laughs> but they all have tracking on the back of what the, when the agents are calling. Do you guys get that? So Amber, all of a sudden, you, he can track you, and let's say you're on the team. So what happens is uh, he can tell that a call came in at 11 o'clock a.m. today, and you still haven't responded to it, and it's 5 p.m. Right. It goes, it goes through. It, goes, it comes to your phone on an app, and then you click the number on the app, and then, then it tracks. And then after you're done, it'll ask you to put in 
you know, like a disposition on the, on what happened and then set a follow-up. And you got to set the follow-up based on the conversation is. And boom down. boom down. That's how he knows who's working and who's not working. Yeah. Who's, who's taking the calls and who's not taking the calls. Because it's not meant, like I'm going to say again, it's not meant for everybody. I mean, boom, Boomtown's minimum $1,000 a month. Minimum. Minimum, minimum. Um, okay, do we have any questions out there for Steve why we got him here? Anybody, anybody? No? You guys uh, get a nice overview of how the team model works, how the online leads work, how conversion works. Um, all that, everybody feel good about it? You good, Mark? Okay, any, cool. No online questions? Um, I have one. Go oh, for it. Right. So as a brand new agent, I know we kind of went over this, but let's say right now I'm a brand new agent. What is the first thing you would do right now when it comes to this? You're going to go, and you're going to sit at your desk, and... No, and you don't sit at your desk. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the first thing I would do. <laughs> I don't sit at your desk. Okay. That's that's the first thing I would do. Yeah. I would I would like. Are you you're from this area? You're not from this area. No, she's been here a year. Um, I mean, um, I mean, just you know, like I would try to, just you know, like I would try to. I'm, I'm not a member, but like the Lions Club or something. Just join it. It's like you know, hundred bucks a year or whatever it is, and you just go to their meetings. Start going to their meetings. You know, that's number one. Number two, I would I would get on and start setting. Um, I would go look, search vacants on the MLS, and and start doing open houses. You can do them every day of the week. I agree with that. Put your signs up, do your open house, just sit there for like three hours, and again for like three hours, and again you're going to sit there and people are, you know, sometimes they're just not. Well, now they're now they're it's crazy, but there were times when you would sit in an open house the whole time and you're just like, you know, trying to stay awake. Not right now, but look look for you know vacant ha homes or or get on uh, CB Buzz and ask anyone if they have, you know uh, they they have an open house or they want you to do an open house and just do them every day every day and then when you when you do them you have a, put your uh, open house sign in sheet and make sure they sign in and then verify that they the numbers and everything are correct because if somebody signs in I'm gonna go all right cool I'm gonna send you a text right now with my info. Did you get it? Oh, oh no! Oh, what number did I put down? You know? Oh, you put the wrong number. You, can't rem you have to remember everything. You can't look at anything written down. And over time, I get I can get up in front of anybody and, and talk. You know? I, cameras freak me out, but you know I'm anyway. But start getting into things you know that are going to train you how to do. What's the other one? The the Toastmasters, right? Join the Toastmasters. They'll get. They'll make you. You know, get up there and talk. You know, and and give speeches in front of people. You might not want to do it, but over time, you know, once you if you start doing it little by little, and they're training you how to do it, you'll get good at talking to people. I'm going to add one thing onto there. So he said, join things right that you're passionate about. Number two, open houses. I agree as much as you can. This is CB Buzz, right? Our closed Facebook group. This property right here, put out by Melissa Flanders, is Alrighty Family. Anybody have buyers looking for Canyon Hills? I've got what you're looking for coming soon. Three bedrooms plus an office, upstairs loft 2.5. Pictures inside and out, not yet on the MLS, right? So if I was to take 40 or 50 people that I know and I were to send them and say, um, you know, uh, hey Steve, this is Amber, just wanted to let you know we just listed, we, not, you know, we just listed a brand new listing in Canyon Hills, going to be coming out Thursday, four bedrooms with a loft, 2.5 baths, three car garage and a pool. Um, if you know anyone, it's going to go fast and I want to sell it. And you send a picture of the house and that comment to 50 different people. Now, not everybody's going to respond to you, but you are fishing for buyers and people know she's in real estate. She's already got a listing. She's doing this. She's doing that. Take that listing and ask Melissa, hey, would you mind if I put it on my page? I want to advertise it to my people and put, we just took a listing. So the other thing too is building a social media platform so that when I look you up, it looks like you're already legit. If I look you up and I don't see any social media um, dealing with real estate at all, I'm probably not even gonna give you the listing presentation itself. You're not even gonna get the chance. So make sure that you're starting to build back behind the scenes this property, that property. Check this out. Uh, so excited for our team here at Coldwell Banker. We just sold this one for $3.1 million on Canyon Lake on Bid Range. We, 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 we. Leverage this crew. Re leverage Steve. He's not gonna care if you advertise this stuff. You know what I mean? Or if you text it out to 50 people. So I would add that to what Steve said with all the open houses and joining the things that you're passionate about. That will work. We used to do that in the prospect group on Friday. People would have to leave the room because people start calling on those properties. 
The, the other thing that I used to do is on Facebook groups, I would take, I would do a, a search on, on one of my websites for homes under $400,000. And it would and generate this whole list. And I would take that, copy that link and make a little graphic and put it on the Facebook groups, the different like, uh, what the hell they call them? The closed, or like the, the community groups. The, the exchanges, like the <clears throat> Facebook exchanges and say, you know, looking for a home under $400,000 you know, um, write some, you know, crafty stuff in there and they click on it, they would come into the site, it would show them like, you know, the list. And then if they clicked on an actual home, it pops up a window asking them for their information. A lot of people bounce out of it, but, and then I, I always track, I use a, a bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, to track that link. So I'll create a bit.ly link, so it's like this short little snippet, take that, put it in Facebook, and then I can see how many people actually click on it. Right, and then I keep putting it up. I got kicked off of uh, Temecula Talk a couple of times, but, <laughs> but I just keep putting it in there, and you know, um, you know, you you'll start getting leads that way. And as soon as that lead comes comes in, as soon as it comes in, get on the phone right away, because if you don't, they don't even know. Well, I don't. Know, when did I? What, what did I click on? Right, right. So you got that one right. I mean, so do those things help you? And even if you're Kristen Cook or, you know, Simino back there or whatever, sending out a hundred of a new listing that you guys just took is going to get you business. I don't care how experienced you are. I don't care, you know, who it is, right? I mean, if you hit everybody in your database with this brand new ass killer listing that could be an amazing uh, investment to everybody, you're going to get a great response and reminding people, I sell real estate, I sell real estate, I sell real estate. I'm at an open house, like he was saying, every time you're there, new house, new house, you know, at our listing, you know, here in Sun City, at our listing here in Temecula. You know, just make sure that you are looking like you are the professional, that you are the experience. And I, everybody, it's such, so cliche, but fake it till you make it. It's really big. I was just going to say that. Were you? You get it. I mean, so, I mean, it is what it is. So we have one minute left. Any final questions before we're out of here? No? Well, uh, did you guys enjoy Steve, though? Did a good job? Got some good stuff? Thank you, sir. All right. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, anybody out there in the Cold Maker family, Steve's always willing to help. If you um, are looking to maybe get on a team, I think you might consider it one more, maybe if you're really great. So uh, you can reach out to Steve and uh, Adam. Thanks, buddy. Michael, Tristan, thanks for running everything. And thank you guys for coming. So, wait, real quick. Did oh, you yeah. hit the beat button at all? Oh, I was on, my, my finger hurts. <laughs> it does. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, guys. Get out there. Have a great rest of your week. And go sit open houses this weekend. All right? Okay, yep. guys. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. We're out. <laughs>